This tutorial is sponsored by Patreon. Thank you all for your support. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In today's video we're going to be talking about a character and the player controller and most importantly um, we want to see the difference of what code we should put into player controller and what code should go into character controller. So let's start. A character. First, what is a character? Well, character is a pawn which has some basic movement um, by default. So we don't have to re reinvent the wheel because Unreal Engine gives us some stuff to work with from the start. So that's the only difference that character has from a pawn. Um, with that being said, character is just a pawn that we control with our player controller. And unlike pawns, characters come with the skeletal mesh component, which enables us to use some advanced animations uh, that use skeleton. But that's it for the character. On the other hand, player controller. Well, player controller uh, implements some functionalities for taking the input data from the player and translating that into the actions, such as a movement. Like if I press space, I'm going to jump. If I press right click on a rifle, I'm gonna shoot. This is what my player controller does. Well, to make it uh, more easier for you to understand, player controller is basically you, and the character is something that you are controlling. So you are basically controlling this pawn, little puppet, for example. Uh, so as uh, in the presentation it says, a player controller is the interface between the pawn and you controlling the player, and the player controller essentially represents the human player will. If you want to jump, you will jump and character is also going to jump. So this is the difference between a character and a player controller. So if we didn't have a player controller, character wouldn't be able to move because nothing would give it um, inputs. So the question is, where do we actually put our inputs? Where to code inputs? When we are creating our player controller, we basically need to know what functionality should go inside of the player controller and what should go inside of our pawn. For example, we have uh, our Unreal Engine documentation, documentation example here. Uh, oh, I put it twice. Oh. Okay, so, well, it's completely possible to handle inputs inside of the pawn, especially if it's something less complex. However, if we have some needs that are more complex, for example, if we want to change our character dynamically at a runtime, these things might be better to put inside of our player controller. In this case, player controller will decide what to do and then issue command to the pawn. Example, crouching, jumping, walk forward, etc. So, we are going to cover uh, more information in the next slide, which is coming. What if our game is that much style of game? Well, in this kind of games, when you die, you get respawned, right? You, we destroy the pawn and we respawn it again. Well, this is a great example to show you why it's necessary that some functionalities are inside of the player controller. Good thing to know here is the player controller persists through the game, while the pawn can be transient. Uh, I don't know how to read this, but basically what it means, it, has, uh, it can have a short uh, period of life. For example, it can be killed in our deathmatch game and then it can be respawned. So if uh, we put input inside of the pawn, once this, uh, for example, I will give you an example, if we put a um, score inside of our pawn, once we destroy this pawn, our score is going to be reset to zero. But if we keep this score inside of our player controller and the pawn gets killed and he respawns, we are still gonna maintain the player score. Uh, so yeah, this is what I gave here for example. So good thing to know is that player controller will persist through the game and uh, pawn won't. Single player games. Well, in most of the single player games you won't be actively switching characters so this won't matter too much but it's very good practice overall and uh, most people will agree that it's more cleaner to put inputs inside of the player controller, same with the UI. Um, 
So yeah, most of your uh, indie games, uh, if you are a one-man team, um, you're not gonna have so much characters inside of the game and you will probably have only one character which is going to do actions around the map so it doesn't really matter where you choose to put these inputs because you're not gonna be switching characters, right? Uh, if it's like some adventure game uh, where you are one character in the adventure you can basically put all inputs inside of your character, right? So here I made an example we have a character named Superman, and we have other character named Human. Abilities will be Superman has ability to fly, and Human doesn't have ability to fly, but they both can walk. This is very simple example in this case, um, because in this case inputs for walking will go inside of our player controller because both of them can walk, and both of them will use player controller. But what about the fly input? Well, in this case, fly input would go inside of a Superman character because Superman is the one who can fly and human cannot. So I hope this made it a little bit more clear about that. What about UI? Well, in this example, uh, let's check where do we code UI. Some people tend to use character for UI and they create widgets inside of it and some people use player controller for it. Well, in both cases, UIs are going to work, but I find it very much easier storing those UI elements inside of my player controller. You can access all of your UIs with one simple cast inside of your character, and you're gonna have all your different references, because when you create a widget, you're gonna promote it to variable, and then you're gonna have a reference to this widget, and then uh, you can um, get all these references inside of your character with one simple cast that you're gonna have anyways. I was reading a lot of um, forums, Reddit, and most of the game devs will agree that much better practice is storing UI inside of the player controller, but you can choose your own style of programming and where you want to store things like this. So it all depends on you if this is a single player game. But in most of the uh, multiplayer games, you will have um, you will need to think more about what you're gonna store where. But to make it simple. Uh, you have a player controller, uh, every character that is using player controller is going to be able to... So if we want every character to be able to jump, we're gonna put jump into player controller. But if we want specific, uh, specific uh, for example, champion to be able to fly and others not, then this is going to go inside of our character input. So I hope I made it a little bit more clear for you guys. Um, that's it from this video. We have no more slides left. Um, this was requested by uh, by one of my Patreons, so if you want to support me you can uh, go ahead on my Patreon page and uh, every Patreon has a um, chat on Discord where he can request a tutorial that he likes and wants to see. So thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!